Hello, IEEE HCAN community, and welcome to the 16th episode of the HCAN Connection on Elevating Your Chapter. I'm your host, Joseph Green, one of the 2022 IEEE HCAN Student Governors and Chair of the Graduate Student Activities Subcommittee. And over the course of this episode, we will discuss ways HCAN can help bring your chapter to the next level, as well as discuss best practices learned by our staff members through years of CAP chapter coaching. Joining us today is Nancy Austin, the IEEE HCAN Director, and Sylvie Leal, Administrative Assistance and Chapter Relations and Operations for HKN. To briefly introduce our fantastic guests, first up we have Nancy. Nancy Austin is, as we said, the amazing director of IEEE HKN Ada Kappa Nu, the Auto Society of IEEE, and joined IEEE in 2012. She has worked to grow HKN to 269 chapters worldwide. In cooperation with the Board of Governors, she has established programs and services to increase the value of membership and strengthen chapters. She's also worked to establish a culture of philanthropy with HKN alumni. Nancy is a graduate of Emerson College in Boston, MA, as well as the University of aix marseille Aix-en-Provence, France. She has over 30 years of associate management experience and received her certified association executive credentials in 2008. She has completed the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Institute of Organizational Management in 2011. She has held positions with the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers, the Society for Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals, the Girl Scouts, and served as president of the Middlesex County, New Jersey Regional Chambers of Commerce. We also have Sylvie Leal. Sylvie joined the IEEE HKN staff in May of 2021. She is the Administrative Assistant for Chapter Relations and Operations. Sylvie is often the voice behind info at hcan.org, our email address, and she's here to help you with any questions you might have in regards to chapter reporting or inductions. Her favorite part of the job is meeting you and working with chapters during coaching sessions. Sylvie graduated from Albright College in 2009 with a degree in music business and women's study. She's also completed coursework in music therapy and audio production, which is awesome, by the way. In her free time, Sylvie enjoys traveling, reading, and going to concerts. She is, one, she is a self-proclaimed podcast junkie and would love nothing more than to hear about the ones you've been listening to. Thank you both for joining us today. Good morning. Good day, Joe. Thanks, thank Joe. you, thank you. Just as a, uh, a brief a brief question here, uh, Sylvie, is bringing your favorite podcast one of the requirements for meeting with chapters? It's not a requirement, but uh, bonus points if uh, if you do, and also set, set aside some extra time in your calendar for that meeting uh, <laughs> if we're going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. Well, I look forward to having that conversation with you in the future here. Absolutely. But um, to kick off the topic at hand, Nancy, to start off with a question with you. One of my favorite memories in HKN was my role as chapter leader. To, to describe chapters a little bit more, how do chapters fit into our organization as HKN? And what's the synergy between our chapters and HKN as a whole? Thanks, Joe. And, you know, our chapter leaders are so significant to the success of Etta Kappa Nu, the program locally, and then the program globally. So HKN is a community, and that community includes, as you said, 269 chapters around the world. So the chapters are integral in terms of having program on campus, recruiting members. It's the chapters who do all of that work in terms of identifying students that qualify and then bringing them into the organization. So the chapters are really critical um, to HKN. And the work that chapters do uh, is really focused in the service activities that they define them, we define ourselves by, right? So in the three things that Etta Kappa is about, scholarship, character, and attitude, the chapters are so essential in developing those skill sets, identifying the members, creating an experience for members um, on each of their campuses. And then that, the nice thing is that that, that, that rolls up into the Etta Kappa New organization, which is a global organization. So as, as a headquarters organization, we do, um, we organize with all of the chapters to help them be successful. We'll talk more about that in this podcast. How do we assist chapters and chapter leaders? Um, but we also create other programming, training services to bring the Etta Kappa New community together as a whole. So we have several conferences. Um, we have our student leadership conference, which is the hallmark um, conference of ours, our publications like The Bridge, uh, this podcast, newsletters, other things that we do to to actually create synergy between the Etta Kappa New community um, 
you know, through all of those activities through our website, through connecting chapters with each other, so that your experience can be wonderful on campus with your chapter and with those, those, those your alumni, the members that joined your chapter and the affinity you have there, and then with the Etta Kappa New community globally and, you know, through the years. Like it. And thank you so much for that answer. Um, just to follow up on that a little bit, I think one of my favorite points of being involved in a chapter is really feeling like my chapter can be a center point for my own local community. Because, you know, alumni members, they have a direct connection to our chapters. Professional members, they're inducted through our chapters. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more as chapters as center points for our HKN communities as well. So that's true, Joe. Like the center point is a, is the is the chapter, right? Most people are inducted. I mean, there's a way to professional membership, and uh, you know, we have an edit chapter of the board, and there are some people that come into the organization that way. Yeah, definitely. And um, in your experiences, have you seen good correlation, just to tie back to the topic of the episode, between chapters that are able to expand their induction cores to these other categories or involve these other categories mm -hmm. of memberships and the events they're able to execute? I think so, because again, your yeah, alumni are really important. So re-engaging with alumni, but then being able to induct professional members. And those can include faculty members that maybe weren't inducted um, as students. So you want to bring in faculty. You know, faculty is really critical to the success of the chapter on campus. Maybe your department chair and other and other officials within your organization. So they can be very supportive. Um, Etta Kappa New was uh, in its beginning years very US centric. So if someone was educated outside the US, they may not have had the opportunity to join Etta Kappa Nu. And of course, Etta Kappa Nu um, only, uh, you know, only is at certain schools. So if they went to a school without a chapter, they maybe they didn't have the chance to get inducted or even perhaps um, they didn't, we didn't induct from that category um, because we, that, that ca the categories of which we induct members expanded when we merged with IEEE in 2010. So it's a great strategy for making sure you have a lot of support for your chapter. It takes, you know, like they say, it takes a village. It really takes the department and a real village of people yeah. um, around the ECE community and CS community within your universities, um, within your student body, um, and then within the Etta Kappa Nu community at large, your alumni, and then Etta Kappa Nu as a, as a global organization. It takes a huge community to create really this um, amazing experience. We know people do and can have through Etta Kappa Nu, and we hope to facilitate as much of that as possible. Awesome. Thank you. To build off of this conversation, Sylvia, a question for you. In your experience, how do you see chapter success affect the local communities? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I really, I see leadership with our members. You know, these are the students on campus who want to help others, you know, whether that means they're helping their classmates with tutoring or maybe exam prep, things like that. Maybe they're mentoring underclassmen, helping those younger students begin to carve their path at the university. Um, deciding what classes are helpful to take, things like that. Um, I just really see that, you know, chapters that are doing well, they're, they're going to pay it forward. They're motivated to bolster others and really help others succeed because that's, you know, that's what brought them to Ada Kappa Nu. You know, we're celebrating their, their scholarship, of course, but, but there's something about that person, you know, they really want to help and they're really service oriented. So I really see that, that correlation there. If, if I'm doing well, I want to help others do well also. That's awesome. And I think we're starting to create a, a very interesting perspective on chapters here, where we see them as, you know, center points for our HCAN community, intersections between many different types of members, and a great way to have an impact on our local communities. So by building up our chapters and investing in our chapters, mm -hmm. we're building up our members and everyone in the proximity too, which I think is you're, one of you're the right, things Joe, about I mean, HKN. only. Only certain people join HKN, maybe become members because there are certain requirements for it. But Etta Kappa Nu can be for everyone in terms of that encompassing the community at your in your area, right? At your university or maybe your local area through the tutoring exercises, through reaching out to other students. So that commitment to others, to student success, um, where they, you know, Etta Kappa Nu students really have proven themselves academically. So for them to share their skills and talents with others. Is really the beauty of the community they built. So Etta Kappa Nu is for everyone in terms of the programs they put on for people, other people on campus, other students, the tutoring, the outreach, and the community, maybe high schools, middle schools, community colleges, grade schools, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, you know, robotics clubs, those kinds of things. So um, it really does um, expand that community. So Etta Kappa Nu is for everyone in that, in that sense. Yeah, definitely. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about 
making an impact on your campus and the importance of HKN chapters being for everyone a little bit later. But to ask um, a little bit more on the newer mentorship about us, uh, the newer mentorship initiatives we have within HKN, as a question for you, Nancy, what's the goal of HKN in supporting our chapters? Well, thanks, Joe. You know, um, I've been with Ada Kappanu just 10 years now, so I've joined Ada Kappanu 10 years, IEEE and Ada Kappanu 10 years ago, and I've had the a great experience meeting people along the way, getting to know chapter leaders and the leadership you serve on the board, the board, and we've done a lot of journey mapping um, with, our, with our different constituents, and so we understand um, some of the basic points of what makes a, what makes a chapter successful. And we know there are certain elements of success that when chapters are successful, what they do and what they have. So um, we, we developed all of that into something called the key chapter recognition. In addition to that, we know there's some real points that, that could lead to chapters going into, you know, getting into, kind of getting into an in inactive state. That's if the faculty advisor retires or takes a sabbatical or leaves for some reason. If officers aren't elected, uh, for the next, you know, the next group of officers aren't elected, if the next group of officers aren't trained or prepared to take on the leadership roles, if the chapter doesn't have access to its past records, um, what did we do in the past and so how can we repeat that if they don't have ideas of what other really successful chapters do. So we know all of these things contribute to a chapter running into a difficult period. And COVID, trust me, was a difficult period overall. It really, it really, uh, it really stretched everyone uh, quite a bit and a lot of chapters became dormant. So we know that these are you know, the points of difficulty. So we said, how can we help chapters through these points of difficulty? How can we smooth those over? And we started to come up with all kinds of solutions to how we can help chapters through those periods of time. And, and uh, although we create resources, you know, video resources, we have written resources, we have found the chapter coaching. I mean, I've done it informally for years, spending time with chapters to understand their specific needs, what's actually going on at their campus. Some things are very similar throughout the organization. Some things are very specific. So if we can start to help address the specific needs that chapters are having, where they might be struggling, we can help to um, provide other resources, direct, find other people to help, bring in alumni, bring in other Etta Kappa new members, um, connect them with other chapters that are doing things that they might like to do. Uh, create those joint programs, which you've done, Joe, so you know, you've, you know, in your chapter, you've done community programs, so you've brought in chapters within your local community, so help be the catalyst for that, and that chapter coaching, it's very dedicated toward what your chapter needs, becomes the critical point at which we can deliver those kinds of services, so we just worked on, what if every chapter were a successful chapter, what if we could, we could get every chapter to be a key chapter or you know, to, to do the things outstanding chapters do. And so this is one of the things that we've come up with that has been working quite well. And we hope to expand it um, through, um, actually we've got an, um, an initial donor, but through other ways that we fund the organization. So we have the resources to do this so that every chapter can be a great chapter. And I really appreciate that, uh, that comment there. Um, I, I think I can definitely share some experiences there as well, where Nancy, you and Sylvie and the rest of the staff have done wonders in terms of helping me uh, come up with creative ways to present our chapter on campus. Because, you know, we've had our difficulties in the past as well, but I think one of the things that was most surprising and going with HKN and turning to my friends within HKN asking for help is just how willing everyone across the board is in terms of participating or formulating events alongside you, whether it's other chapters or professionals mm -hmm. or HKN Board of Governor members. It's, it's really great to see this, uh, this culture of giving back to the chapters within our community. But um, as a follow-up to this comment, um, to continue this conversation, Sylvia, as a question for you, through what avenues can our chapters seek mentorship opportunities within HKN? Sure, yeah. I mean, Nancy touched on it. You know, there's, there's so many folks that are here that want to help your chapter succeed, whether it's, you know, us at headquarters, having those coaching meetings, uh, members of our board, uh, each chapter is supported by a regional governor. We have four regional governors uh, on our board. And they're there to help, you know, work with you and meet with you as well. I know, Joe, I can probably speak for you and Ashley, our, our student governors. You know, if, if you're having trouble, reach out to them on Slack. They're going to they're gonna support you and, and find ways to help out. Um, and Nancy also mentioned other chapters, right? You know, we have uh, something on our website, the Successful Practices Database. 
maybe you're looking for something that, you know, an activity to do with your chapter and you find an idea in there, reach out to the chapter that did it, you know, try on Slack to see if you can get in touch with any chapters that are nearby you to collaborate or just, you know, get suggestions, get support, um, you know, joining our monthly chapter leaders calls. You know, maybe there's a theme that Joe and Ashley are gonna specifically be talking about at that meeting, but that's a meeting of your peers. So you, you know, they're gonna be the ones that are really gonna understand, you know, what you might be struggling with or, or, you know, things that you really need some advice on. So I really just think reach out um, and we're gonna be able to find someone that can help out. For sure. And uh, just to follow up on that, I, I think that's very true that whether it's a chapter leaders call or reaching out to a board of governor or one of us student governors over Slack, kind of as I was mentioning before with Nancy, like we are very, very happy to help out. I think all of us here can say the best that's moments amazing. we've had helping with HKN or participating mm -hmm. in HKN has been aiding our chapters in some capacities, mm -hmm. whether it's just oh, I have this event, do you wanna do a collaboration? Heck yeah, I wanna do that collaboration with you to more poignant topics like, oh, how do I overcome this specific difficulty? And again, we've really formalized this mentoring concept. So we created um, this past year, we, we had launched something called the Chapter Support Initiative. It has two um, very significant parts of it. One is the chapter grant program, which I know we talked about in other podcasts. And if you're interested in getting a chapter grant, to help your chapter, there's information on the website. We'd love to talk to you about that. And Sylvie is coordinating uh, along with me, the regional governors, the student governors, uh, other the resources we have, actual uh, you know mentoring sessions. So we have about what 16, 17 chapters right now in mentoring. Um, say, uh, yeah, Sylvie. So, just so again, mm -hmm. it, it's as simple as sending an email to info at hkn.org and saying, hey, I'm really interested in 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 some mentoring or having a meeting with y'all. And we'll get that set up. Sylvie's been great about coordinating those and then following up. And then as we uh, figure out the individual needs of that chapter, how we connect them to those resources that will help them. How do we bring together the people that they need? Um, you know, how do we train those officers or help them get through this rough period or you know, um, connect them to other chapters, whatever is going to happen. Um, you know, we can do that through this, this rather, it's not super formal, but um, structured mentoring program where then we're going to follow you and keep um, together with you, provide you with other resources. Uh, make sure that you're following up, um, you know, coming to, comp to those conference calls and taking advantage of other things that we have. So, um, you know, we really put some specific dedicated effort into this official mentoring and then chapter coaching. So it's, it's available just by a simple email. And just to add to that, yeah, I mean, we've been working with a lot of chapters who have, you know, maybe gone dormant a lot, you know, because of the pandemic. But if you are an incoming president or officer and you feel like maybe you didn't get the best transition, let us know. If you are just having trouble recruiting new members, let us know. These are all things we can be talking about during these meetings that Nancy mentioned. It doesn't just have to be, you know, we're trying to get our chapter going again. It's, you know, any, you know, pain point that you might just need a little bit of outside help, let us know. And I, I really appreciate you saying that, Sophie, because I think there's an immediate connotation where it's like, oh, if I sign up for chapter mentoring, that must mean I'm like a recently reactivated chapter. We don't know what's going on. I don't think that's the point. I think the idea is much more along the lines of we're here to help you in whatever capacity you need. Maybe that is we've recently reactivated or we recently came back from inactivity, um, but it could also be, oh, I'm interested in branching out to another uh, department. How do you suggest I do that? Or, oh, right. I want to increase our adductions 10% this year. How do you suggest we do that? Mm -hmm. Exactly, Joe, because again, there's very specific things that you might be looking at saying, like, because again, one of the things we see when you're talking about different departments is inducting from CS, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, if depending on how your department's structured, you can induct from other departments, biomedical, some other ones. And I know there's some other honor societies in that space, so we don't look to take anybody else's place. But if there's things that make sense on your campus, you can induct from any of the technical fields of interest of IEEE, which is pretty broad in terms of, you know, is, a, is there a technical society that covers this discipline? So you're right, we work with chapters on strategies for working with additional departments, you know, building their capacity as a chapter. Um, and again, those officer transitions are pretty key. We're working on some other uh, rituals and um, 
processes to help with those officer transitions. You know, when we changed the reporting a couple of years ago, um, we do pretty robust reporting, you know that Joe, we ask for a lot of reporting, but what we do is we actually um, archive that. So for over the last several years, if your chapters reported anything, we have, we have your annual reports, we have the archives of your activity reports, we can share those back with you if somehow they weren't kept for you by the last group of officers. So we're also serving as that, you know, that kind of history for your chapter. I like it, great. And I think this is a pretty good transition into our next topic. And this is going to be a question for you, Nancy. What do you see as some common struggles for chapters and what advice do you have in terms of avoiding or overcoming these challenges? I think there's always a leadership challenge, right? How do we elect officers and then train those next officers? Is it, you know, again, if, if, if um, you know, we find this a lot, if you don't elect officers on a regular schedule and have, you know, have that transition, this is something that really um, can hurt a chapter. Cause then you go back and let's just say you don't elect officers this, this spring, you start up next fall and there's really no one in place to take over the chapter. It can take so many months to try to get active again and you miss out on the whole uh, first semester of the next academic year. So that trans that election of officers is really crucial. We don't dictate. Oops, no, go, ahead. go ahead, Nancy. So we don't dictate when that has to happen, but we do recommend that it does happen before you leave campus. Um, and again, making sure you have the next group of officers in place and trained. Uh, we also recommend that you send your officers to the Student Leadership Conference. And we're lucky that in 2022, we'll be back on in person. And so a really great strategy is to make sure you have officers at that conference um, who will come back, you know, Joe, inspired, engaged, excited, all kinds of resources and other connections, other chapters. So we know that that's a real key point is, is that. The other point is recruiting members. So how do you do that on campus? How do you actually hold a recruitment? What makes, you know, how do you, how do you get into the other classes? How do you work with the department? How do you um, go out and get your message out? Now you've had to do that, Joe, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. How do you um, create a, pla a place for yourself on campus? What is the, what is your particular service activity going to be? What space are you going to occupy and how are you going to reach out um, to, to other students? Is it through the tutoring? Maybe it's exam prep, maybe it's just homework help, but maybe somebody else does that on your campus. So you need to come up with something else that might you know, be intriguing. Um, how do you get professors to let you into the younger classes so that you can talk about HKN and what it is and what it does so people want to join? How do you create that desire for, for this accomplishment? Because it is like winning an award. We have people in IEEE that call this fellow, the fellow status for students. So if you know what a fellow is, pretty high up there. So Etta Kapani is like fellows for students. So um, it's something you carry with you forever. And how do you create that on campus? Um, and how do you create those chapter traditions so that it lasts long after you put a lot of work into your chapter? The last thing you want to see is that when you leave and go on to the other great things you're going to do in your career in life, that your chapter doesn't survive that transition. You want to make sure that that's there. So those are the kind of key points. Sylvia, I know you talk to people a lot. Maybe that's about reporting and some other things that don't happen and that affects the chapter. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, we want you guys to stay connected. I mean, that's the way that that's the way forward, I think. And that means, you know, stay connected with us, like keep your reporting up, keep good records of what what your chapter is doing. Um, come to events, the conferences, SLC, like Nancy mentioned. Stay connected with your, you know, with your department. Stay connected with each other. You know, really, like Nancy said, what be talking about what your place on campus is going to be. What are your goals for your chapter? You know, what do you really want to get out of your time in HKN on your campus? Um, you know, because then if you're staying connected and you're keeping in touch, those supports are going to come to you because people are going to know what you're trying to accomplish and they're going to be there to help out. So, you know, really staying connected, I think is kind of a through line there. Oh, for sure. And just to share a uh, personal experience here, I used to take reporting a little bit more for granted with say when I began my HKN journey. But um, I think one of the most uh, interesting things I learned when I joined the board was just how many people actually read most or all of the reports that come through. And like, 
especially when I started reporting more. Yeah, Nancy, for sure. I would start getting these messages from Nancy. just like, oh, I read over your eboard uh, minutes. Here's a suggestion for you. Or like, oh, I see you're doing this event. This other chapter is doing this event. Maybe you should talk to them. At times, Nancy, it really felt like you were in my head, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> which is both a uh, slightly horrifying, but awesome thing at the same time. <laughs> Well, you know, again, you know, I always say I have the greatest job ever, right? I get to work with the most amazing people, um, both, uh, you know, the adults that are involved, but all the students um, doing really incredible things. And I'm just, I'm inspired by all of you, right? So I do enjoy reading the, the chapter activity reports, the chapter reports. I do enjoy reading them a lot because I, I learn a lot from what's going on and I, I, I get the pulse of what's happening in our chapters, what's working, what's not working. And so that we can be very proactive about um, providing more resources to help you uh, to help you with that. Um, you know, I know students often don't realize what they're learning by doing these things, but trust me, you'll have to do a lot of reporting in your career. <laughs> and so, you know, understanding how to report and what to report, measuring your success, figuring out what works and what doesn't work is going to be really critical in the rest of your life, not just in school. Um, leading a group, putting events together, leading meetings and, and taking minutes and doing all those things. You're gonna, these are things, maybe you're not gonna forget where you learn them, but they're very critical skills. So um, there's so much leadership that's learned through this volunteering experience. And this generation of students, I have to say, you know, they always called my grandparents' generation, the greatest generation is the next greatest generation in terms of how much uh, young people today, college students today care about their world. And you see that in the activities they're doing. So it really is, um, it's so uh, uplifting to read. So I do enjoy reading them. That's kind of my hobby, right? I sit at home on the weekends <laughs> I and read I like chapter it. reports. I just, um, I just want to warn you, Joe, um, as I, you know, reach my year, you know, anniversary with HKN, I'm starting to read them too. So look oh, out. No. <laughs> it's infectious, out. right? It That's is, awesome. it is. But just for the same reasons, right? Like I'm so oh, excited no. to see, because I'll see, you know, the induction list of all the new members that are getting inducted into chapters. I see those and I get, make sure those folks get their certificates, but then seeing them, you know, on the list of new officers, that's oh. so exciting to me. And then seeing, you know, all the great events that those folks are, are working really hard to put on for their communities. It's, it is really exciting. And that, and I'm totally learning exactly why, you know, Nancy's reading all those, because it's really, it's awesome. It's really, it's motivating for me. And it's, it's really fun to celebrate. It's, it's, it's very life affirming, I have to say. So I, mm -hmm. I am really inspired by what happens at our chapters and, and the difference that they're making and, um, and the fun they're having, but, you know, again, I like to do chapters and have fun. I was looking at, um, uh, our Kappa Psi chapter, you know, went to the hidden swings in La Jolla. Now I can't wait to have them take me there when I go I visit. I know, right? So, um, you know, and, and I see other fun things that chapters are doing. I know the new chapter often has ice cream socials. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a, it's a great idea. And we should have some more ice cream socials, Sylvie. Maybe we should have them at uh, headquarters. <laughs> there it is. I like it. We should. Uh, but I think that brings up two very good points. The first is, you know, reporting seems trivial but it's very important, both in terms of, well, keeping a record of your ideas and how they went, as well as letting HKIN um, know how your chapter is doing. And also a lot of these practices that we were mentioning, the more creative ones can be found in that best practice database. And mm -hmm. I, I love the best practice database. I think it's mm -hmm. so interesting to go on yeah. and just see what other chapters have done creatively on their own campus, how mm -hmm. they did it and the response they got out of it. Yeah, so there's over 300 a, in there. So yeah, there's yeah. really, there's a lot of things to resource from. So, we, you know, again, it's a great resource and um, it, it's really a lot of fun. It's again, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I, I think to rewind the dialogue a little bit, um, I think all of us at this point have mentioned officer transition as a common yet inevitable pain point that our chapters are going to go through, mm -hmm. through their transition. And especially in terms of the uh, dialogue of elevating your chapter, I mean, even years where I served consecutive years on my local e-board kind of felt like I was starting over, bringing in those new officers, resetting our vision, retraining, all of that noise. So in your experience, since this is a, a very difficult topic for a lot of chapters, what are some best practices you've seen in terms of officer transitions? And do you have some tips that chapters might start incorporating into their transition plan? And I'll start with um, Nancy and also Sylvia, I'd love to hear your comments on it as well. 
Sure. The most successful chapters actually have some kind of um, program where they actually have meetings with the incoming officers. So some elect them early in the semester so they can mentor them. So I see some that they're going to do the officer transition at the end of the spring semester. They elect their officers in late winter. So they have a couple of months to spend mentoring with them. Or some chapters actually have the next next year's officers, people that think they want to have officers, they're, they're shadowing them throughout the year. So that's a really good practice. The other one is actually to have some kind of transition event. So, you know, we do, we are developing a ritual because rituals, you know, kind of make it seem more formal so we can recognize and reward that. But like I know our, our Moo chapter out at UC Berkeley, they do a weekend away for the new, for the new officers. So they actually spend a weekend uh, training the new officers and going over things. But in all, in, all, in all cases, they have good documentation. And the good documentation about what they've done in the past, where to go, how to do things on the campus of Boston University or anywhere else, who do you contact to get rooms or who is the most, you know, how, how do you do these kinds of things? The documentation is so important. So I've seen wikis, they have Slack channels, I've seen other kinds of things that chapters build in terms of having some documentation, a history of their chapter. And then, uh, you know, so they can keep that history together. So, so again, we collect some of it now so we can always provide it if it hasn't been kept. Um, but the chapters that do these great yearbooks every year of everything they've done, it's easy to look back and say, what did we do before? Because maybe, you know, again, gosh, I, I'm looking for an idea and you can look back and go, oh, three years ago, the chapter did this and it was awesome. Like, uh, it was awesome. So let's redo that again. Or who's, who's in the book? Who's in my signature book? And that's your, those are your alumni. You can always pull them out of some OU analytics, but you know who's in that signature book and what kinds of activities do they do that people really liked? Um, those pictures and photographs that might be in there are really crucial. So it's that documentation. And then that commitment, right? The, if the current officers wanna make sure that all their hard work is being continued on, um, boy, that's, that's powerful. Yeah, and I, I've learned from Nancy really the the value of having like some sort of like how to guide or like resource document, right? We have one for our advisors. Uh, we created one very recently for newly incoming officers that get reported. We send kind of a here's what you need to know from our end. But I really encourage chapters to have that. You know, what does your treasurer always need to do every year? What are the general responsibilities of each position? because then that's something you can be giving to the next person when you're stepping down. And then another piece really is, you know, plan ahead. You know, when you become president or you become secretary, you're going to stop being that position at some point. So keeping in mind, you know, who in your chapter do you see as being someone that could really fill that role? Talk to your faculty advisor. Who do they know that they see, you know, leadership potential and just kind of keeping in mind who's going to take this on after me as you are going through your, your roles and your duties and just knowing, you know, oh, okay, I'm gonna tap that person and kind of keep them in mind and bring them in. And then you, you'll you get to that shadowing and stuff when it's really time to, to do the transition. And so I think really just kind of having, you know, formal processes, whatever that means for your chapter um, to be able to hand over and planning ahead. Those are kind of two things that I see work really well. Great, and thank you both for those responses. Uh, to move on to the next topic, during my time as a chapter leader, there were times where despite great local resources, I wasn't necessarily sure of the best path forward for my chapter. What are the first steps you take with chapters once they start mentoring and how does that mentoring help with these uncertainties? I think the most important thing we do during mentoring is listen. You know, so again, I, I would always say listening is, is what you do first, right? Uh, to try to really understand what people are experiencing and what's happening. So, um, you know, I, I first tell myself to listen, you know, God gave you two of these and one of these, right? So uh, listen and, and hear what's happening. Um, and then it's also getting the right people in the room. So, you know, you start, we start with, with whoever we have. So if it's a student or advisor or department chair or you know, an interested, whoever the interested party is, even alumnus, we start with who we have, but then how do we get the right people in the room to have this conversation so that we can, we can find people to help, you know, that, that have, that share the common interests. So I think, you know, this, those are the two things, you know, listening um, very, very carefully to what is happening and what has happened, and then trying to work with who we have, get the right people in the room. 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of folks that we've been meeting with don't necessarily have a lot of background or, you know, knowing what exactly first steps might be. Um, Cause like I said, we we're meeting with a lot of chapters who are trying to reactivate. And that might mean the faculty advisor found a couple students who are really eager to get that chapter going again, but they don't know, you know, about the reporting. They don't know how to do an induction. They might not know how to recruit. So we can do some of those general, here's, you know, here's our chapter resources page on our website. Here's kind of some tasks that are gonna have to get accomplished, but let's start at the beginning. You know, who, what does your department look like? Who will you be able to invite um, to have new members? What will you talk about at that, you know, informational meeting that you're gonna have with folks you want to join your chapter to kind of get them interested and, and get them educated about what, what HKN is. Just kind of, you know, like Nancy said, listen, what's your, what's your unique situation? And then, you know, kind of some general, here's, here's some first steps and here, you know, carving that path forward. You know, here's some tasks that need to get done and here's who's gonna do them. For sure. To build off of some of the prior points we've been discussing, you know, when a chapter is either reactivated or has gone on for multiple years here, it always comes with, you know, the hope that everything on campus goes smoothly. But in practice, you know, you can run into situations, whether it's dwindling membership or um, even issues with a faculty advisor or a department, particularly on these last couple of points. If a chapter finds themselves in a situation where they're re receiving either departmental or advisor pushback on certain topics or goals they want to achieve, how do you suggest these chapters can go about rectifying these issues? So again, I think I think it's always good to to go and get, get help. Because <laughs> in a lot of ways, when you, as a student particularly, you're learning to manage up, right? So it's a skill you have to do later. And, you know, I have to manage my boss somehow to manage the expectations or make sure they understand what I'm doing so that I have a clear path forward. And how do I manage, uh, you know, the, to the top of the organization to make sure I have what I need to do that? So a lot of ways you're learning to manage up. And that's not, you know, it's not a, it's not apparent always how to do that. Um, so, you do have resources with us. So again, I, I talk to a lot of chapters and they're, they're, these things do come up. Um, you know, there are sometimes there are faculty advisors that are, are just, aren't as supportive um, of, of the chapter as much as you need them to be. Maybe they're not, maybe, maybe, they're, maybe they're enhancing the experience, but maybe they're, they're blocking you from inviting more students. Maybe they're blocking you from something else. So, you know, we, can, we do get involved and try to help with those situations, help try to mitigate them either with volunteers from the board, uh, myself, or local people, sometimes alumni. So again, it's looking for the right person to go out and have those conversations so that we can try to remove any roadblock that a chapter is having. Um, and sometimes it's just an understanding. I mean, Etta Kappanew and I typically merged 12 years ago, but I can't tell you how many people say to me, oh, they merged? Uh, because of course, it, in their world, it, it wasn't it wasn't, um, it wasn't a seminal experience. So, so um, they don't understand that you know, today we can do certain things that maybe we didn't do when they were members, or maybe they weren't inducted as a student, so they don't have the same affinity for Etta Kappa Nu. Um, I work a lot with department chairs on how, what's the benefit for a department chair of having a very strong Etta Kappa Nu chapter, and how they can work together to achieve the goals, you know, the department chair's goals on campus, which is always a great thing to do, right? So it really is uh, reaching out and getting some help. Um, you know, we mentioned me, Sylvie, you, Joe, the board, um, but, but again, info at hkn.org. Um, uh, every question is a good question. And um, you know, we're always happy to uh, have that conversation and see what, see what we can do to help. Definitely. And we've spoken a lot about going into successive years with a strong plan, especially in terms of achieving some cardinal goals that you set for your chapter and the importance of these steps in terms of elevating your presence on campus or achieving some sort of metric you've designed for success. To back up that dialogue a little bit, um, Sylvie, can you talk to us a little bit more about the importance of developing a plan for your HKN chapter? How do you set realistic goals or advise chapters to set realistic goals and then follow through on them over the course of that year? Yeah, I think a good place to start um, for me is always getting a sense of why did you want to, you know, take up this this job of, you know, be, you know, being a, an officer or being in charge of your HKN chapter or reactivating the chapter that kind of fell by the wayside. You know, what is it 
that you see as the important reason why you should invest your time in doing this. Um, because then that's going to help you and your fellow officers really kind of carve out your identity for your chapter. Like Nancy said, what's your place in your department? What, what help can you provide to your community? What, you know, what is it that's going to set your campus group apart from all the other ones? Because I think that's going to help inform you, you know, what do we want to do? Someone else is already do, doing tutoring. So what are we going to do? What are we excited about? What are our skills that we can share with others? And, and so I really think kind of having that background, having that foundation, you know, identity of your chapter is going to help inform you on what kind of things you're going to do throughout the year. And then you're going to look at, you know, what resources you have, what resources are available, um, and then see what's, what's attainable and what, what's, you know, possible to do. But I really think finding what you're motivated, what your group is really motivated to do is what's going to get done because you are invested in it and you're excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's kind of a good place to start. Yeah, we have chapters that they, they adopt a highway. We have chapters that adopt pet shelters and do food drives for their local community. So there's all kinds of ways that a news chapters can do community service. And some of them, you know, really are invested in robotics clubs or maybe local scouting troops and things like that. So um, it, it can be very unique to your chapter and to where you are, you know, where you are in your community and things like that. What kinds of other things are around? Some really do, you know, they, they do library uh, sessions where they're doing engineering conversations at libraries with younger students. So um, it does, it, it, they, these often become passion projects and they, they become chapter traditions. That's great. One, one other aspect that um, I particularly enjoyed being a chapter leader and I felt represented our HKN chapter at its strongest was the importance of collaboration both with other HKN chapters, as well as on-campus organizations. From both of your perspectives, can you talk a little bit more about the power of collaboration and where that can help bring a chapter at any stage of the chapter life cycle? Oh yeah, sure, so collaboration. And even in our induction ritual, which um, every at a Kapanu member goes to, you know, it says we don't seek to replace any other organization. We seek to work with other organizations and by, by your membership in Ed Capanu to elevate all of those experiences. So there always is, there could be an IEEE student branch on campus. Every Ed Capanu member is an IEEE student member. So certainly that's one, but IEEE has lots of technical societies. Um, technical societies have chapters. That's a great resource to network with. Um, and then there's other engineering organizations like WE or SWE or NSBE or, um, Society of Hispanic Engineers. So we really uh, encourage you to look at and partner with other organizations. Um, when you do things, invite other organizations, um, do collaborative programs in your community. Joe, you're in Boston, so it's pretty easy. There's lots of chapters around, but how can you collaborate with other chapters? You know, when we, the last time we had the SLC, which was in Boston, our, you know, our Moon New chapter was there. The, they're the Italian chapter and they're really a lot of fun. So I can't tell you how many chapters did programs with MUNU because <laughs> they're like, we want to do something exciting with our MUNU chapter. But they're all, that chapter is five years old and they've already won a study chapter awards almost every year they've been around because they're so excited in, in Italy and at their campus to do different things and, and they're excited to work with other people. So that cross-cultural thing is also great, right? We have chapters all around the world and they would love to collaborate with you. Um, other chapters, we, you know, Sometimes people think, oh, if I have a mentor of another chapter, that would be, which means I, I, I need help. They take it as a negative, like you said, but really it could be a real positive in terms of doing some co-programming. Yeah, it's really, you know, staying connected, like we've been saying pretty much the whole episode so far, right? Like work with others, you know, maybe there's a chapter nearby you that might have some more resources than you might have access to, but you both want to do the same kind of program. Just work together if you know if it's geographically possible but we've also seen you know because of covid we're we're on zoom or we're on you know webex whatever have a a tech talk with another group it could be the italy chapter even if you're out in pittsburgh you know mm -hmm. right like so so it's really just you know staying connected and and helping each other out i really like that message i think it's uh it's been very good to reaffirm throughout this message you know going with a plan, set some goes, collaboration is a key, and officer mm -hmm. transition is possible with a little foresight. <laughs> it's definitely possible. But there the we say, right, 
uh, plan your work and work your plan. So, and even if you, so, and even if you have a, a small schedule when you start the semester out, we're going to do Founders Day. We're going to go to the SLC. We're going to do at least, you know, this two socials and two, you know, we're going to have alumni, an alumni event, and we're going to have a research professor come and talk about what they're doing. That's that's the beginning of a plan. And, and so having those things in place and saying, we, we're going to do that in the spring and in the fall, and then the spring, we're going to do these things. It's really important, um, you know, how we're going to engage our, uh, our potential members, you know, our candidates for induction, you know, what kinds of things can we do with candidates that would really be fun and, you know, what, what, what does our community need? Um, so I, I, again, having that plan, even if it's, you know, four or five things, get you off to a great start and then then other things will fill in sure and we're almost at the end of our episode here but before we close out i was wondering do you have any last words for any chapter leaders watching this episode thank you so i really i you know i can't say thank you enough to those who take leadership roles in this organization. And congratulations, you've really taken a very important step for yourself in terms of developing your own skill sets. Um, maybe some of the skill sets that you don't learn uh, in engineering school, but that you're going to need in your life. So congratulations and thank you. We really appreciate um, what you do for your chapters um, and, uh, and communicate with us, stay in touch, uh, tap into those resources because um, there's lots of other people that wanna work with you or some of us are right here on this call, but even throughout the whole organization, um, you know, let's 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 build that community because um, it really does take a lot to be successful, not just during your chapter, but in your career. And you know, these connections that you make now, the friendships and the relationships you build now, will serve you well. You know, if you go to grad school or beyond, whatever you decide to do with your engineering diploma, or even if you don't decide to continue in engineering. These are the great relationships. When I talk to alumni, especially 50 years ago, they're like, these are some of the happiest, best memories I have. So, you know, you really are building foundationally for yourself, skills, relationships, people that you probably want to keep involved with your life throughout your career. So I encourage you to do that. So. Yeah, I'm going to echo what Nancy said and, and thank everyone who's watching. You know, you by staying in touch, you, you know, you're helping me learn how special Ada Kappa Nu is and what it really means to be a part of this, this society. So thank you everyone. And I just, I look forward to meeting you. I see all your names in the emails that I get and I, and I really wanna, you know, keep that connection and, and meet all of you and keep hearing about the great things that you're all doing. For sure. Well, first and foremost, I wanna thank our amazing guests, Nancy and Sophie for taking the time to talk to us about elevating your chapter today. Secondly, I also want to thank all of you for watching and particularly any chapter leaders out there. You know, I recently went through the chapter leader experience. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do and you're doing HKN, your community and your fellow members a great service by doing this. So with that, I'll close out this episode of the HKN Connection. If you enjoy our podcast and other forms of HKN Media, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay informed on the next latest and greatest brought to you by HKN. And with that, I'll say thanks one more time and have a great day.